real life. The book is Mushroom in the Sand. Farshid Ferdowsi is the uh, is the author. You can find it at local bookstores and uh, online on Amazon.com. Also, your website. What's your website, uh, Farshid, so that folks can go directly? Is, the website is mushroominthesand.com, mushroominthesand.com. And Bookman, Bookwoman Bookstore actually has the book on the shelf. And I've been there, and I've and I've autographed uh, their stock, and hopefully I will have a live book signing there over the next few weeks. Yeah, we're going to be setting one up. I talked to uh, Larry Woods just uh, a little while ago, and we'll uh, we'll be working to set that up and promote it as well, so folks can actually come down and have a chance to meet and greet, and and also pick up a copy and uh, and get it autographed uh, at that opportunity as well. You, you talked a little bit about your family and 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 the history there. When you talk about the pressures, when you talk about the threats that that you use in your book as well. You've experienced this. Your family's experienced this. That is correct. We belong to the Baha'i faith, which is a religious minority in Iran, the largest religious minority. And the, 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 the Baha'i faith started in Iran 166 years ago. And, of course, now it's spread all over the world. But uh, since its inception, the Baha'i faith has been under severe persecution, either by the clergy or by the government. And now that we have an Islamic republic, the clergy and the government is one and the same. So the the, the intensity and the, and the pressure on the Baha'is have been enormous. Baha'is cannot go to, uh, go to university. They are all discharged from, from, uh, from public work. Their pensions are cut. Basically, they are non-citizens. And in the early, early 1980s, immediately after the revolution, the officials of the Baha'i faith, the Baha'i faith has no clergy, so the official, officials of the Baha'i faith who are elected were under severe uh, pressure, and my father happened to be one of them. My father served on the council that governed the affairs of the Baha'is in the city of Tehran, and he and his colleagues were arrested in November of 1981, and two months later on January, in January of 1982, they were all executed. We are told so much that, that Islam is a, a religion of peace, and, and there are certainly peaceful and tolerant people within Islam, just as there are peaceful and tolerant people within every religion. And, and yet, this does not sound peaceful and tolerant when you can completely exclude and exterminate people of other religions. We see in Saudi Arabia, again, another country that is controlled by, by the Islamic uh, clergy, uh, in effect, uh, with, with the Islamic police basically patrolling the streets. Bibles are not permitted. Other religions aren't permitted. You look at other countries where, where Islam is the predominant faith. There is no tolerance of other religions. You've experienced it. Why do they have the capacity to continue to portray Islam as a religion of peace and tolerance when the reality is so far from that? Uh, Steve, it's a, it's a, it, what you just described is something that the history of religion can be written in. Religions, uh, the, the monotheistic uh, religions of the world, if you go ahead to their source, you find out that they, are, they have a lot in common. They all promote peace. They all promote uh, living a moral and upright life. But over time, the practitioners of that religion somehow distorted for self-interest. So what, what, what is being practiced in all of, uh, in all of these uh, uh, Muslim worlds, in, in so some of these Muslim countries who are a little bit more radical, and all the pressures that they put on people, these are contrary to the essential tenets of the Quran. They basically have distorted their own religion, and they have basically kept its it's, it's, it's essential good in hostage. We've talked about the fact that, you know, in the Catholic Church, you know, when you have uh, problems with, with priests and, and, and small boys, that, that the Catholic Church has to clean up their mess. The same thing's true, really, with Islam. And yet a lot of people within Islam are afraid, and rightly so, that if they speak up, if they denounce the violence, if they denounce the radicals, they get targeted. How, how do we clean up Islam? And it's, it, we can't do it. The Baha'i faith can't do it. Islam has to do it. And, and the people within Islam has to be brave enough to step up and clean up their own faith. You're absolutely correct. I mean, 85% of the Muslims in the world, the many studies show, are mainstream Muslims, and they are, they are peace-loving, and they have no, no, uh, no compunction for violence or, or terror. It's somewhere around 15% that have been radicalized and promote violence. The problem so, is when you've got billions of people who are Muslims, 15% is hundreds of millions of people. That's right. I mean, the, <laughs> the Muslim population in the world is estimated as 1.2 or 1.3 million people. You're absolutely correct. Islam is at a crossroad. Islam needs to find a path to modernity. Many, many, you mentioned something about the Middle East. Show me one Islamic country who has, who has created a democracy. 
It just doesn't exist. Well, and, and even Turkey, which which is often held up as an example of, of kind of a modern Islamic country, you cannot build new Christian churches. You cannot really even repair existing Christian churches. It's kind of like over time, the Christian churches will disappear. That is not tolerance and modernity. Not at all. But I can. And that's the best example, perhaps. You, you, uh, that's absolutely correct. And in, and, in, and in Turkey, according to their constitution, they have in, they have institutionalized separation of mosque and state. Ataturk, the father of the modern Turkey, completely separated uh, Islam from, from, its, uh, from its governance, but gradually it is, being, it, it is creeping back in. And you, what, you, what you mentioned about repairing churches and repairing mosques, there is a specific quote in the Quran, a, uh, an order by the Prophet Muhammad, that if in a village a mosque or a, a, a church or a synagogue falls into disrepair, it behooves the Muslims to assist their Christian brothers and, and Jewish brothers to rebuild their mosque and synagogue. That is in the Quran. And yet is ignored uh, in Turkey and in, and in other places around, uh, around the world. Again, uh, it, is, it is timely. Uh, you, you do a brilliant job in your first book. And uh, i got to tell you, I'm very impressed with it and uh, look forward to visiting with you, seeing you down at Bookman, Bookwoman, with a book signing soon. Farshid Ferdowsi, author of Mushroom in the Sand. Go to the website, mushroominthesand.com, or go down to Bookman, Bookwoman in Hillsborough Village. They've got it on the shelf. You can also go online, mushroominthesand.com. Farshid, thank you for being with us. We'll talk with you again soon, and we'll be back with more of Music City Magazine in just a moment.